In 1983, a scruffy 19-year-old musician named Duff McKagan moved from his hometown of Seattle to Los Angeles, where he joined a fledgling band called Guns N' Roses. Within five years, Duff and his bandmates were living the rock and roll dream and all that goes with it. In 1994, empowered by sobriety, Duff grabbed the world by the tail and hasn't looked back. And there he is. Hi. Come in, darling. Hi. I invited him to my place to talk about his new book, his daughter's band, and his intricate hair care regime. What Come people? on in. You want some tea? I, I don't see any people. You want some uh, tea? Want some coffee? Yeah, uh, coffee's good. You want some coffee? Oh, you had snacks? You have snacks, sweetie. I just ate. You, by the way, are the quintessential rock star. I mean, and you carry it off beautifully. What does that mean? I don't well, even know. I, well, it, you, you, there's a certain, you have a look that anyone who looks at you would say, this guy is a rock star. I just, you just kind of, you have this, you exude this sort of energy. Okay. But, what, what's the percentage of, of leather in your wardrobe? Would you say? Um, <laughs> I, that's a good question. I have no. I I do have. A You're good, a numbers guy. I am a numbers guy. Yeah. I, uh, leather boots. Yeah, it's 50-50. 50 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Wool, leather, cotton. Co yeah. A lot of cotton. Yeah, a lot of cotton. Okay, but rock star, of course, is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you're a writer, a business dude, a family guy, and we're yeah. gonna get to all of that stuff. Okay. Um, but I want to start with the rock and roll. Okay. Okay. Um, so you've been working a working musician for over half your life. Yes. Would you say? Uh, like well over half well my life. Well over half your life. Yeah. Um, and, and it all began in your teens in Seattle, yes. Washington. And you were in like a lot of bands that were kind of pr the pre-grunge, very punk. What was that scene like? Yeah. Do you remember much about it? I wish, you know, I think at some point I'd like to write just like a little book or something like a, uh, on that mm -hmm. because it was such an interesting time here in Seattle. And there was a place called The Bird. And it, and it was a it was a punk rock place and uh, bands would come to and play there. DOA was a band and so finally being the last of eight kids, want, wanting something of my own. Yeah. Everybody played music or was involved with music. There was finally something at my age group that was my own. Yeah. It was punk rock yeah. and um, just there was gigs everywhere at all the like these little union halls. Mm -hmm. But that was a place you could rent. Mm -hmm. Um, if you had somebody over 18 to sign for it, mm -hmm. and you had to rent a cop, an off-duty cop. Oh, but really? that's about it. Well, and you just go in and play. You Do bring deal. in a PA, Some mm -hmm. somebody's got a PA, or mm -hmm. you piece together something, and there's a rock show. Yeah. yeah. So, so you were like, what, 15-ish or so when you said, hey, this is my path? Uh, yeah, uh, 13. 13. Yeah. 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 So you played in a number of bands, I know mm -hmm. in Seattle, all sorts of things. and then. Your list of band credits is long, and Wikipedia gives the whole shebang, but we'll just hit a few. Um, okay. So let's start with Guns N' Roses. Right. You were the bass player. Um, are you known for playing the bass in a particular way? Is there a Duff McKagan bass sound? I, yes. I mean, I lucked into the sound. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked, um, Sign the Family Stone and a lot of like R and B music. Yeah, all okay. yeah, funk or like funk, right. yeah. mm -hmm. early Prince. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to LA, I, up here I played drums and bass and guitar. I couldn't figure out which one I was going to go to mm -hmm. market with. Yeah. Really, you yeah. know, what's going to be my thing? Right. So when I went down there, um, just by the, by the end of the day, I was going to be a bass player. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what sound? What loud? What does you get that a good ba mm -hmm. bass sound. So I kind of went after some some sounds that I like, Larry Graham, and then there was a band called Killing Joke, mm. which is not funk. It's not R&B, it's uh -huh. like post-punk. Uh -huh. um, and sort of like this amalgamation of all these sounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got really kind of bright um, bass strings. Mm -hmm. I found bright out which- bass strings. Br bright, bright sounding. Mm -hmm. okay. So they yeah. sound like, kind of like piano wire. Uh -huh. Um, uh, the, the amp and whatever, and the, and the pick, kind of everything. So the pick is kind of, it's a little thinner. Mm -hmm. So it's, so like the pull off with using a pick, kind of sounds like mm. sort of slapping, oh, but still rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, it's um, kind of a line. Yeah, line so line. it was just something I really stumbled into yeah. and it became, um, I guess, my sound. Mm -hmm. I've been watching some Guns N' Roses music videos, um, just kind of 
thinking about you and you know the, the, the big deal that that band was. You're so young, you're all so young and so cute with really great hair, of course. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I don't know where it was in, in the, the run of the band, but you guys were the biggest, you were the biggest band in the world. There was a point. And so I'm wondering what was it like to be at the center of that tornado? What was that like? If you could define that feeling. <clears throat> well, of course, you don't realize it if you're in the middle of it, like sure. how big your band's getting. Sure. Um, I remember coming back to L.A. after that first Appetite for Destruction tour. There's no internet then. Right. There's no cell phones. Right. So you're getting um, changes in culture slower. Sure. So yep. we had left L.A. and we came back to L.A. a year and a half later and everybody was wearing cowboy boots and like bandanas and looked like us. Oh, we could tell like God. they're dressing like us. Wow. And so the culture had changed. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, I think there was like six months in there where I thought, where the bands really started to get big. And I thought, well, you know, of course, the, the girls yeah, sure. finally realized how good looking I am. Absolutely. And, and funny. Finally and funny. Yeah. Funny and Smart. Uh, engaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all the whole package. The, really, they finally got it because yeah. I knew it all the time. I'm sure you did. And uh, I had a bunch of friends. Like, wow, these people really, they get it too. <laughs> my my posture is perfect. <laughs> my smile must be great. But then, yeah. I do come from this really big family, and one of my older brothers came down to L.A. and kind of saw that what was going on. And I, and I bought a Corvette. We started to get some money, and I bought a Corvette. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy it's like twenty-five thousand dollar car. Big it deal. wasn't a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bentley or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. a Lamborghini or something. Mm -hmm. I got like you know a blue collar rich guy's car. Yeah. And my brother John came down and said, "Oh, so you're just gonna Isn't spend it? all your money and, and be a like a an idiot?" And you said, "Mm-hmm." Uh, <laughs> no, I, it, I it kinda, hit you. Yeah, and he and he, he kind of pointed out this particular brother will point out mm. things to you that mm -hmm. you don't want to see. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "These guys don't want these guys to just use him." And he's and yeah. kind of okay. So you come to that realization. Oh, you're popular. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? You've never dealt with it before, right? right? right. Well, so so now when you're looking back, I mean, how would you sum up the experience? What is the, what did the band and what does the band mean to you? Well, yeah. So I'm just talking about the beginnings, really. Right. Um, the band we were, a, it was a real. We did it on our own, and we did it how we wanted to do it, mm -hmm. and we knew, at least within the five guys of the band, like this is the coolest thing we've ever. This is beyond what we thought wow. it could be, and the, the chemistry of the band was was uh, perfect to us. It really became a, a brotherhood because we went, experienced so much together. Only the five of us can really understand what happened sure. because you are in this this bubble. It's it's really huge. You have a lot of people working for you. Yeah. But in the center of it, you guys are like this thing that everybody's trying to get a piece of. Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly there's outside people, there's managers and like uh, yeah. these little kind of things being, wedges being driven in yeah. and whatnot. But we didn't see it. And all of us lived, so that's a good thing. That's a beauty thing. So we have memories of yeah. it, and uh, I'm still friend, you know, friends uh, with everybody there. Yeah, you stayed. You stayed basically connected to everyone in some way. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, we're only here like once. Well, so after Guns N' Roses, I know, you know, Velvet Revolver, which is kind of a super group, um, Walking Papers, which I know you guys played Art Zone. Yeah. You just got a record deal. Loaded. What you formed in the 90s, late 90s, and mm -hmm. you and it's been going strong. I mean, you're still touring with that band. So when I went to stay out of you after Guns, yeah. we were happening babies. Yep. Well, Susan was happening. Yep. I was just in the room. <laughs> you had something to do with it. Yeah. yeah I was there. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I went to see out of you. Yep. I got into see out of you yep. and went to business school. Yep. But I couldn't just like be a student, so I had to play music. So mm -hmm. formed this band, Loaded here, and it was kind of like my college band. Oh, interesting. Usually you have your college band before. Yeah, thing, right, right. But right. I had it after, and then right. it became a real kind of thing. You know, you're you're playing guitar and you're lead vocals. Yeah. You're the front guy, front man. So is there a difference between being the front man and being 
sent all the say the rhythm section, whatever playing bass or whatever, not being in the spotlight center stage. Is there a difference for you? Yeah, I so loaded. I didn't play guitar and sing on purpose. The, okay. the thing I started writing songs, and I think maybe I thought, okay, I'll get a singer, or and it was just too much of a hassle to be in school, be having little babies at home, and getting a singer. So yeah. I just started. We started playing gigs and. We went and played Japan on the spring break, and it, we played these big gigs, and it just seemed to work. Hello, Tokyo. It's been a long time. Singing is a, it's a challenge, and I've really kind of like started to take it seriously. Like, oh, how do I get to be a better singer mm -hmm. and hit notes, mm -hmm. you know, and get a wider range and do vocal warm-ups and all that stuff? Yeah, it's made made me a better backup singer for when Velvet Revolver happened. Oh yeah, understood stuff a lot more. Sure. And, so you never stop as a musician, I, I think. I really, like, I'm 51, right? Um, so you, like, you, you can get better at your craft. I think you apply yourself yeah. more later in, in life, yeah, too. Like, yeah. I'm going to take this serious. And... When, for what, what, going, playing now, when you, I mean, most people don't, will never play big, huge stadium shows or big. Um, what's it like, I'm always curious, I'm just from a fan's point of view, to walk on to a stage and there's screaming fans, what does it feel like, and does it ever get to be old hat? I have, so far, knock on wood, I've never had a gig, big or small, that's been old hat yet. Wow. Yeah, I get nervous every show. Real yeah. anxious? Like, like, mm -hmm. like, am I going to be able to deliver? There's a whole hour before oh. thing I do, mm -hmm. and oh. if I don't do it, in that same, it's almost like baseball. Oh. But um, can you except tell me what it is, or is it secret? Well, it's it's it's. Um, yeah, no, it's not a secret. Like, I have to have an energy drink uh -huh. one hour before the show. Yep. And I got to down it straight. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that just kind of sets a base. <laughs> and then 40 minutes before, I have to sip at another one. Yeah. And, uh, and it has to be alone time. Like, anybody that knows me knows, like, an hour before show, it's like my wife, the kids, they... Leave. leave. Yeah. So I warm up, and I do the thing, and just kind of get ready, and... and uh, I guess I'm probably high. Uh, yeah, we'll caffeinate energy. it up. Yeah, yeah, sure. You don't want to. You just don't want to go out and suck. And it's not an ego. It's, it's. I think it's personal inside. Like absolutely. So, you know, me getting to the place uh, with with Guns N' Roses, playing the big huge place. It was gradual. Mm -hmm. So we moved up and moved up. And mm -hmm. but there has been some shows where, it's, it's unbelievable how many people were there. And mm. but. Then again, you're playing some small place and the person is right there. Hold it's like, hand. holy. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Do I got any nose hair sticking out? Is it? <laughs> Always got to check that, man. Make, yeah. Put that on your list. I should. Oh, crap. Yeah, another see, thing yeah, on my let list. Me see. Let me look yeah. right now. No, you're yeah, good. am I good? You're good. You're good. Okay, thanks. All right, well, another chunk of your of your creative life, obviously, is a writer. Right. Um, you've been writing a regular column for Seattle Weekly since, what, 2008? Yeah, it's probably right. How did you get that gig? It was 2007, I was on the road at Velt Revolver, and Italian Vogue knew I'd just come out of school. I was like the only guy who just went to college, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In, in, in rock. Okay. So they thought, oh, this guy might be able to write something. They wanted a, a fashion piece on 1987 Hollywood. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> right? Uh -huh. So, so I, I, I'll try. And it turned out to be this other story. It was like... I didn't know anything about fashion in 1987, mm -hmm. I realized. Mm -hmm. Our fashion was just, we were broke. Yeah. So it was the clothes we had. The holes were because... Those were the pants you wore. Yeah, yeah. and I went into like 87 in Hollywood, mm -hmm. everything was going down. Mm -hmm. From needles to mm -hmm. sex and everything. And then kind of other things started to hit, like HIV started to come in. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so my 87 Hollywood was a little darker. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote the story. And they, they used it. They liked it. And it was an Italian. I, it was an Italian? It was before I started doing my leisure reading, <laughs> reading in, in Italian. Italian. Oh, yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, Those but, other languages. Yeah, but somebody from the weekly, I guess a, a columnist mm -hmm. had just left at that point, And somebody from the weekly saw that. Yeah. And I'm and from said, Seattle. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, do you enjoy doing it? Is it, is it a fun job? I do. I, I really do. I, 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 um, I was writing for a point that I was writing... Uh, all the time. I was writing for ESPN and the weekly That's what and I Playboy. And Playboy. There's like three different things, yeah. Yeah, so I had three deadlines a week. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I was traveling and touring and yeah. stuff. It does keep you out of trouble. Hmm. 
you know? Because it's, you have to be focused on your writing? You're always thinking about, what am I going to write about Right, next? yeah, yeah, and the panic, you're like, i, I got to hit that deadline. What am I going to write about? Yeah. Yeah, that, once I figured out what I could, what I was going to write about, then it would be, I'd get in, like, that was the easy right, part, right. the writing of it. But just getting at what is it going to be. So in 2011, voila, yeah. wrote this fabulous memoir, It's So Easy and Other Lies, about living in the fast lane and in, in the surviving the fast lane of rock and roll, right. basically. Um, basically, that's Basically. Good. So it's an excellent read. It's, and what I want to say about this book is it's so well-structured. It's a, it's a page-turner. Um, that is not easy to do. So I, my, I'm wondering, how long did it take you to write it? And, um, and was it grueling writing about some of the darker, yeah. difficult parts of your life? Okay, so it took f uh, 14 months. So wow. it started with some of the columns I was writing for the weekly mm -hmm. just weren't appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I would save that in my Word documents, right? And uh, my editor from Playboy, he had read some of my other things. He goes, you should write a book. Mm -hmm. So I'd send him my stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he'd go, oh, hey, document <clears throat> number 12, paragraph 3, sentence 2. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? What did it feel like? Mm, kind of Got to fill it out. I'm like, what? I don't know. I tell him. He goes, don't, don't tell me on the don't phone. Do, yeah, yeah. Right about it. Right. And then the arc of that story started to kind of rise to the top. With many of these same people, I personally witnessed a wonderful lust for life as we played music together as kids and looked toward the future. Of course, no one sets out to be a junkie or an alcoholic. Oh, it's not a tell-all. No, absolutely it's not. A, no. And I don't think a gentleman really kisses and tells. It's, it's nobody's business. Right. That's not the story I'm trying to tell. Exactly. Them. It's not the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I want to mention, so, the, the new book. Uh, yes. The new book, uh, How to Be a Man and Other Illusions, yeah. comes out in May. There was not an advanced coffee, copy, so I have not read it yet. Yes. I have seen the cover of the book. You have, yes. Yeah, okay, so um, that cover is adorable and handsome. My daughter, May, did the, my hair and makeup well, for that Well, really? Cover. Okay, yes. well, here's an, uh, just a quick uh, merch idea for you. Okay. That should be on a shirt. Okay. And to that end. No, you didn't. What, what is and it? And to that end. Oh, you, two shirts. You didn't. How did you do that? I did it yesterday. And I got rid of the name right there, but I thought, and it's not, it's crooked, and it's not, but I want, this is just an idea for you. What do you think? There it is. Right? Nancy Guppy. I should make you head of, I don't have a merch department. I will be the head of the merch department. Okay. Totally. You don't have to pay me a cent. Okay. So this, the new book, though, does that, that started as a, a, a Seattle Weekly column, right? It did. I think it was called Man Up. Man Up. Man okay. Up. And it was about um, something, like, I just gotten back from Europe. I saw this guy from this metal band, like, tough, gnarly dude. He climbed, there's an audience out there, and I'm watching, and the guy climbs up on the PA speaker, like, I'm going to jump, and it's going to be gnarly. <laughs> but he got up on top, <laughs> like, oh, crap. And he, so he started that, that uh, walk of shame back down Ooh, the thing. Oh, yes. And the audience uh, was, like, laughing. And, yeah. and um, so it, it kind of went into, like, if you're going to be, do something that's, that's gnarly and rad, do it. check it out first. Yeah, think it through. Th check it out. But if you're going to get up there, jump. Yeah. you got to jump. You can't <laughs> right. be the guy that backs. You can't. And that no. kind of goes into life, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You know? And, and yes. I started. So I put all these kind of stories, not just that I learned. I don't know how to. Right. I'm, I'm faking it as we go. <laughs> Everyone's but, uh, faking it. Right? We're all, oh, faking, we're it. all faking it. Yeah. But I've learned some things and, and seen things that I've learned from others. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put them all in this story. Mm -hmm of six months of me touring. The it's point like, is being... It's okay a, to be yeah. yourself with, you, with your friends and your, and your yeah. anything, and it's okay to be whatever you are. Right. If you're gay, straight, anything, right. go. Just do it. Go. Jump. Yeah. Right? Jump. Jump. Yeah. Um, uh, you alluded to this already. We've talked about it, um, but I, I would guess that your biggest accomplishment is your family. Of course. Your lovely wife, Susan, your two beautiful daughters, Grace and May. Yeah. Right? Did you always think you'd have a, a family or is this kind of a surprise? I know you've, you've been married for a while and have a family for a while now, but did you, is it surprising to you? Uh, I've loved It's a Wonderful Life since I was like nine. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. that sort of mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. or an ideal, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always been there. And when I was in the throes of my, my alcohol and drug, it, like yeah. the most thing, the thing I was, I was grieving for the most once I really realized I couldn't stop so I won't have that family. Ah, and mm -hmm. uh, so when I got 
sober, when I got out of that stuff, I would yeah. realize, well, maybe I, I can. I had mm -hmm. hopes. And it's a, it's a unique responsibility to mm -hmm. be that dad. You can't, you can't, you got to stop a lot of your nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So my girls are really, uh, I'm really proud of both of them. They're fun. They're fun yeah. people. They're, uh -huh. And they're, they're humorous and smart. And they're kind of little leaders. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, well, and Grace, your oldest, has a band, The Pink Slips. Yeah. Um, and are you kind of managing? -ish? I'm not kind of not managing. Tell me, can I wear your denim jacket? So all these other girls know I'm yours. I tour manage. Oh, there you go. Good. Right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. like this morning. Yeah. So Grace, no, she's the singer. Yeah. Grace, your singer, always carry gear. Always carry gear. Always ah. carry gear. Don't be the diva. Don't, no. You want a band? You want guys? So you're, you're all... Fellas Get together, right? Yeah, yeah your team. Carry gear. Oh, or nice. the fellas are going to start like going. Getting annoyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it like to see your daughter ripping it up on stage? I, I love it. I mean, I, she does some things. Uh, <laughs> she does some things that I'm like, whoa, that's my daughter. Uh oh. <laughs> but then again, the other side of me, almost the bigger half, is mm -hmm. like, that's exactly what I would have done. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about sobriety because would you say that with, is it fair that without sobriety you wouldn't have any of what you have today? I, yeah, <laughs> it's fair to say. Mm -hmm. That's fair to That's say. That's fair to say. Um, wh when you got sober in 1994, yeah. right, and you were 30, when you got, once you got over or through the kind of withdrawal and got basically on your feet, mm -hmm. right, did you... Was it was there a sense of like oh here's the real me, or was it oh I'm who am I? It was the who am I? Who am I? For mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. yeah. And slowly but surely, I mean, I couldn't even like at the beginning, like it was like being on an acid trip. Mm -hmm. And I'd done acid in my teenage years, so, so it was like mm -hmm. you'd hear the voice come over in the grocery store, like probably I'd just get a price check, but I would think they were talking about me, like they spotted me. Oh, interesting. I'm a fraud. Oh, wow. I'm not really a sober guy, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, really weird mm -hmm. <laughs> moments in there. Mm -hmm. I've come out of the store with weird items, like, uh, because I was just so nervous. I had my, my car, like you smell, all you could smell is brake pad. Mm -hmm. I was just driving so stressed just out. Tight. And I just wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Yes. And so it took, I, I really lucked out, um, or, or fate would have it, um, that I, stumbled into the, uh, this particular martial art. And it really, I saw a guy and I saw his eyes. Mm -hmm. It was my sense that became my teacher. Mm -hmm. In his eyes, he, I saw everything. He's comfortable, mm -hmm. he's happy. Mm -hmm. He can look you straight in the eyes. He's looking through me, actually. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? And I just followed this guy for, till now, wow. till now. By design, I don't hang out with people that are actively doing crank. Right or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that it's just not my world and that wouldn't be too healthy for me probably yes, yeah who knows how he got out early or how he got a second chance it's, it's just family it's like it's a village and it's not just in seattle it's mm -hmm. like everywhere we go mm -hmm. so we're all together yeah and yeah. uh a tribe. It's a tribe. Yeah. And <clears throat> any one of us could fall and, and have mm -hmm. and dirt all along the way. That's and, the and nature we're all of it. there. Mm -hmm. It's just when things can't get no worse. So at this point in your life and your career, what has to be present for you to say yes to put your talent and time into a project? What Nancy has to be Guppy. It's got to be present. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, okay, so doing this thing. Yeah. I trust you. Like, I had a conversation with mm. the publisher and their team and everything on Monday. It was about the whole campaign. Yeah. And I said, yes, but guys, I'm doing Nancy and Guppy's show in Friday mm. in Seattle. Mm. They're like, what? Who? What? what is it? But the book's not a, it's okay. Oh, wow. It's Nancy and Guppy. Huh. Well, you, and then, uh, so that, uh. There's people I know that I trust. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, to do things that they want me to do. Mm -hmm. I did Dr. Phil on the last book thing, mm -hmm. right? That's a big, like, weird 
no go zone for me, like mm. TV and that stuff. Yes. Um, the book company, of course, over the moon. They're like, he's read it and he's really into the story, like the getting better. And if you can do it, anybody else can't. You know mm -hmm. what I say in there. Mm. Um, so I drove and I went in. There's all the people and the stuff and the green room and the sandwiches and the people pecking at you. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not. I don't know. And Dr. Phil came in the room. And he said, uh, hey, why don't you guys just leave him alone for a second? He said, and he came and he sat down. And he was really cool. And he goes, hey, man, I just want to let you know. This is it's going to go. Uh, I just want to talk to you about the arc, the particular points of the mm -hmm. book. If, that, if that's cool with you, we, we can proceed, you know. And it was great. So nice. I guess honesty, mm -hmm. kind of knowing what's going on. I got to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, try not to suffer fools. Um, too much these days, mm -hmm. and um, but I surround myself with family and the, the the stuff that's the most important to me. And when I go out and work, I work hard mm -hmm. because I rest hard. I, re I play hard with my family, and mm -hmm. and we got you know uh, I got a good base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you um, giving us your time yeah. and dropping by my you know, pad. What I meant to say when I said guppy to all the New York people, they were like. <gasps> Scared. Oh, oh Guppy. Oh, yes, yes. Man, yes, Guppy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Coffee yes. cups, you hear them breaking, like people are, huh, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. My, my star is so big there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Duff. All right, yeah, cool. It's really, really, really great talking to you. Cool. I yeah. like your pad. You can come up by anytime. Huh. Anytime. Is he in the right spot for you? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go again. Shut up. Because I like your hair. Yes. And I wanted to know. You, how do you? What do you do? What's your regime? What's your my, hair care regime? I don't do much. I do. Uh, I don't wash or condition my hair too often. Once okay. a week. Once a week. Once a week. Whoa. When I do the conditioner through my, then yeah. I'll use a brush. But that's it. Really? Just to brush it through. Uh huh. And then I towel dry my hair. And that's it. Hey, will someone bring me that hair thing, that head thing? It's on my desk. Oh, that's amazing. Actually. Isn't that crazy? Wow. <gasps> I know. It's on the spectrum. Well, how much do you bench press? How much do you bench? <laughs> what do you bench, dude? I, I, what do you bench? Do you I don't bench? ever bench. Well, what do you do? How do you get this? Uh, I, I don't know how much I bench. What do do you it bench, again. Dude? Do it again. Wow. See, that? that's really strong. I do like a lot of different stuff. A lot yeah. of lunges, a lot of like uh, pull-ups. and Planks? Planks. All day long. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, come do on. it. Do it. Come on. Ugh. Wow. I know.